Yeah. You thought I forgot all about this series, didn't ya? You thought I was just gonna finish off with Battle of the Bastards and just think this is a perfect piece of television? Nope. I said I was gonna finish it. Oh, I may regret this. So here we go, Game of Thrones Season 7, the penultimate season of what many people consider to be one of the most grandiose spectacles in television history. And just in case you have not gotten this far into the main Game of Thrones series yet, I'm going to be reviewing the final two seasons in the hype up to House of the Dragon, which I'm very, very hyped for. Season 7 came out a few years ago, so a lot of these plot points should be public knowledge. So this is your spoiler warning, my friends. There it is, fair and square. Alright, so let's get into this. I think it goes without saying that the production value of this show is still absolutely spectacular. The CGI shooting on location, it is just astounding what we're looking at. The wall being torn apart in the finale is one of the most spectacular pieces of fireworks that you will ever see. Daenerys Targaryen's children, the three dragons, honestly there's a lot of moments in here that remind me of why I love the first Jurassic Park film so much. Yes, they could be monstrous hideous creatures who are burning traitors right on the spot. And yeah, how terrifying is that? Daenerys, if she finds a traitor in her ranks, she will sick her children on them instead of beheading them. That is gnarly. And Rami Jawadi's brilliant score plays a big part in this. There's also a good amount of wonderment with these creatures. I specifically love the one little moment where Jon Snow reaches out to one of the dragons and he's kind of terrified at first, but once he lays his hand on it, in hindsight, it makes sense why he would be one to touch it for sure, but... I don't know, there was just something so endearing about that moment. And speaking of, all these actors, oh my god, they are just incredible. Nicolaj Kosser Waldo is of course dangerously reckless and courageous as Jamie. Lena Headey is oh so deviously maniacal as Cersei. And my man Peter Dinklage as my favorite character in the whole series, Tyrion, does not disappoint. But you know what my favorite storyline in this whole season was? Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. Not only do Kit Harington and Amelia Clark have great chemistry on screen together, but you know what? This story just seems like such a match made in heaven. This alliance right here just feels like the interesting thing that each character was missing throughout this entire series. Yeah, Jon Snow has a lot of really captivating character work to sink his teeth into, especially in the build-up to Battle of the Bastards. But it feels like Danny was the one piece of his puzzle that was missing. And same thing with Daenerys, who at this point arrives in Westeros with her army and her three children, and she begins to wage war on the Lannisters, who have defeated her enemies far and wide. And what happens is Jon Snow leaves Sansa, played brilliantly by Sophie Turner, in charge of Winterfell, and he visits Danny to secure her help to defeat the White Walkers and the Army of the Dead. And I'll get to the Night King later. But you have so many interesting debates, like the one in Episode 3 between himself, Danny, and Tyrion. That is such a brilliant scene. Season 7 has so many moments like that. But then you also have moments where it kind of leaves you scratching your head like Jon Snow starting a romance with Danny. Now, on the surface, Jon Snow and Danny's alliance is supremely dominant. But when you add that romantic layer into the mix, it just feels like it wasn't really needed. Especially when you factor in the big plot twist. And yep, I warned you about spoilers. Here's the big one. Jon Snow basically was not a bastard after all. He is basically the heir apparent to the Iron Throne because he is the son of Daenerys' brother, therefore making him Danny's nephew. And when you see what they do in the finale, it's kind of sickening. Now granted, unlike Jamie and Cersei, they're completely unaware that what they're doing is completely demented. But in the back of my mind, now I'm just thinking, did you really need the romance? And based on what other people are telling me, I'm starting to get the impression that Season 8 will have a lot more head-scratching moments. I mentioned the White Walkers, so I might as well talk about their leader, the Night King, a big baddie. Oh my god, this guy is so cool. Not only is the design freaking demented with those icy blue eyes, but unlike King Joffrey, who you hate because he's arrogant, unlike Ramsay, who you hate because he's f deranged. The Night King, you just can't help but notice, is a freaking badass. And he horrifies you without saying a goddamn word. And he was powerful just all by himself, wielding his big spear. 
But then when you factor in that he kills one of Danny's children, puts a spear right through the dragon's neck in a very, very heart-wrenching sequence, and Amelia Clark sells that wonderfully, by the way. But then when that dead dragon is resurrected and those icy blue eyes pop open at the end of the penultimate episode, episode 6, oh boy, sh was about to go down and boy did it that undead dragon burns down the wall opening the floodgates literally and figuratively for the army of the dead to wreak havoc over this entire country and it leads to a really captivating cliffhanger for this season i will give them credit for that but Tyrion is persuading danny not to destroy king's landing reminding her that she does not want to simply be a queen of ashes so they actually enlist the help of cersei yeah cersei and danny who hate each other they basically have to form this unlikely alliance to take this army of the dead down and that summit scene was super captivating when Braun opens that box and the undead zombie just pops up out of nowhere and Jon Snow is basically explaining why this is important to Queen Cersei that they get rid of them again I can't really say enough good things about it it's just really compelling it's so exciting to watch the action itself is really freaking brutal as it always has been now swords are on fire people's throats are getting slit which I'll talk about but the thing about season 7 that I really appreciated were those debate summit sequences where it's hefty dialogue every character feels warranted in their beliefs and why they believe the things they do and it's just written really freaking well i mean these screenwriters are just i mean they're really good at writing dialogue creatively speaking i mean with john and daenerys kind of hooking up at the end in danny's cabin i mean they have some head scratching moments in there but for the most part through this show i mean the writing's been really really good i don't really have a whole lot of complaints there also, one other storyline that I really, really dug was the dynamic between Arya and Sansa. Maisie Williams is so freaking great in Season 7. When she returns to Winterfell and she comes across these security guards who are just complete doofuses, that's a really funny sequence. And then you have a really bittersweet reunion between her and Sansa, and they basically have to encounter why Sansa was getting together with Joffrey. Why didn't she do anything when their father was getting beheaded in season one? And it's a really heartbreaking sequence when Sansa sees the young woman that Arya has become this psycho killer almost i mean it should be a very heartfelt reunion but there's a lot of bad blood in there which makes it all the more satisfying when the slimy little finger is slit open just right in front of everybody in winterfell sansa accuses him of treason and murder and then Arya just goes right up to him when he's begging for mercy and just and i'm like see you later lord baelish what are you still doing here? Obviously, there's a lot to like about Season 7. Yeah, there is a bit of a head-scratcher with Aegon Targaryen actually being Jon Snow, Danny's nephew. And yeah, I will admit, Bran Stark is still not a very interesting character. I'm sorry. This actor's doing all he can, and the Three-Eyed Raven is a cool concept, but it just feels like to me he's there to narrate the action. He's the one who eventually reveals that it was his aunt who got together with Danny's brother and out pops Jon Snow. He was the character who was explaining all of that, basically, in a gigantic exposition dump in the season finale. I mean, through this entire series, yeah, you feel sorry for him in a a lot of cases and the three-eyed raven like i said is a really really neat idea in theory bran should be freaking awesome but the fact that through seven seasons i've just seen him as nothing more than an exposition machine ah uh, that's a worrisome sign so even though i do have my issues with season seven it is certainly very enjoyable i'm gonna give it an a minus and like i said all this stuff is on hbo max i highly recommend that you guys start this show if you haven't already especially if you were swayed by that house of the dragons trailer which aired at comic-con but oh man i gotta get through one more piece of garbage before i get to the house of the dragon don't i oh we reached that point guys <laughs> i never thought we would make it to season eight my word but guys let me know what what you guys think of season seven down in the comments section below what is your favorite episode and who has been your favorite game of thrones villain is it the night king is it ramsey bolton is it i doubt it's joffrey because everybody hates him obviously i love making all these videos i love discussing all brand new things in television and movies if you guys are new to the channel welcome i love making these videos on a regular basis i love starting the discussion with all of you so if you want to continue discussing all this geeky stuff consider subscribing hit that notification bell right next to it that would be an immense help to you and to myself and feel free to hit that thumbs up on your way out speaking of helpful we have already built such an amazing community over here talking 
all brand new things in movies and the entertainment world and television. And I would love if you guys joined the party as well. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I will be continuing my thoughts with Game of Thrones when I watch season 8 once I finish those 6 episodes. And I will also be continuing my Lord of the Rings series and the build up to Rings of Power. Return of the King is up next. Arguably the strongest entry in that franchise. We've got a bunch of new releases to get to in the month of August. We've got Bullet Train. We've got Beast starring Idris Elba. Can't wait to talk about all these movies with you guys. It should be a freaking blast. But guys, y'all are the best. Thank you all again so much for your support. And uh, with all that being said, Back Talk, commence. <laughs>